You work as an engineer for a company that produces strong materials. The standard way of assessing how strong a new material is, is to make an egg-shaped specimen and check the highest floor of the building from which we can throw it without breaking it. The building has 100 floors and we want to make sure we clearly identify the last floor, that is, we want to know that it doesn't break at floor n, but it breaks at n plus 1. You ask if you can have two specimens, as this would speed up the process significantly. If you don't break the egg, your assistant can get it back for you. But once you broke both, you will not be able to give your boss the result of the test. You are already short on time. What is the minimum number of throws you need to come up with the answer? If you watch my channel introduction video, I mentioned a riddle a friend of mine was asked at a McLaren Formula 1 interview. Well, this is the riddle. So have a go with it. Being able to advance through a few logical steps, let alone solving it, could give you a chance to make a great impression at a future job interview. As usual, let's take our strategy lists and scan through them. From the general strategies, we can select number one and two, use the information contained in the text, and develop an intuition of what is going on behind this riddle. Number four, solve a simpler version of the problem. Remember, this is probably the most powerful technique. Number six, sketch your reasoning. And number seven, least possibilities. When I was solving this, I actually ended up thinking of an analogy that might or might not be useful for you. This can effectively be considered an application of strategy number five. Look for an alternative formulation of the problem. I will present it to you, but feel free to use it or not. And also, let me know down in the comments if you find it a good analogy. Imagine I bought a new shiny car. You see it and ask me, wow, how much have you paid for this? It must be really expensive. I don't really like to talk about money. So my answer is, I will let you guess. I will tell you if you got it right or if it's more expensive than what you say. But you can only overshoot the price once. The second time, I will stop giving you answers. Now, think a little bit about how you would start guessing the price. Okay, back to the strategies. On the second list, the big one is playing an adversarial game. No matter what the procedure you come up with is, we will have to assume that the last floor at which the egg doesn't break, which I will call the safe floor, is the one that takes more attempts to find. Okay, now we have everything we need. Are you ready to tackle the riddle? As I said earlier, reducing the problem to smaller numbers is probably the most powerful strategy we have available. You can pick, in theory, any number, but as we have two eggs, going for very low numbers might not be helpful. I will pick six. For a second, let's simplify even further. And for the purpose of really understanding what is happening, say that you only have one egg. Say you go to the third floor straight away and you break the egg. Then you wouldn't know if the safe floor is the ground floor, the first or the second. You wouldn't be able to report to your boss and probably end up being fired. This means you can't take risks and you have to start from the first and go all the way up one by one. Obviously, randomness will play against you. And this means that the safe floor will be the last, number six. And to realize that, you'll need to drop it from the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. But we have two eggs, so we need to take advantage of it. An intuition is coming up. Make sure you think a little bit about it before moving on with the video. The idea is that we can use the first egg to reduce the range of possibilities by skipping a few floors here and there. Just for the sake of the argument, say I drop it from the third floor and it doesn't break, and then from the last floor and it does break. This way I have reduced the possible range to the one from three to six. Once I have done that, it looks like I'm very much in the same situation we described with one egg, having to go through the entire possible floor range one by one. Your worst case scenarios would be floor number four and floor number five, both with four throws. Still better than going one by one from the start, right? We can also skip one floor each time. So we do second, fourth and sixth. And as soon as it breaks, we use the second egg to investigate the exact safe floor within the smaller interval. How many throws do we need? Again, your worst case scenarios are floor number four and floor number five, 
again with four throws. It is very tempting to try and extrapolate this idea to the case with 100 floors. Basically, what we learned is that you want to use the first egg to reduce the range to a reasonable value. Not too high, otherwise you need a lot of throws with the second egg, but not too low, otherwise you need a lot of throws with the first egg before reaching the top. We can even push our intuition a bit further and say that a reasonable idea could be to have equal throws for the first and the second eggs. So for the case with 100 floors, this could mean going 10 by 10 with the first egg and then cover the range with the second egg. Doesn't sound so unreasonable, does it? This would mean that with 19 total throws, I could identify the safe floor even in the worst case scenario, which adopting this strategy is floor 99. But have we really applied strategy number two? Have we really understood what was going on in the simple example? Maybe worth going back for a second. The thing that should trigger an alarm is that the worst cases require four throws, but there are only two of them. All other possibilities would require less. What this means is that our strategy is strongly penalizing one case in favor of the others. We would benefit a lot from redistributing the worst cases. In particular, say I break the first egg with the first throw. I have already identified the range I have to go through with the second egg, so I can afford to have it a bit wider. Look instead at the last range. I have already spent a few throws with the first egg. I would rather have a narrower range there. Step back. Do these ranges have to be equal at all? If you made it here, you should have the key intuition now. We don't go 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three with the first egg. We instead go to the third to start with, so adding 3 from the grand floor, and then to the fifth, so adding 2. We reduce the throws now to only 3. If you got here at an interview, I can tell you, you would have made a terrific impression. To really close the riddle, we need to apply a little bit of math. Instead of going 10 by 10, following what we have learned on the simpler case, we want to go to floor n, we need to find n, then we go up another n minus 1, then another n minus 2, and so on. How to find n? Well, it depends if you're into math and equations or not. Let's assume you're not. We can just try a few. Let's try 12. We have to check if going up 12 floors, then another 11, then 10, and so on, brings us to the top. Mm, we only get to 78. We need to increase a little. Let's try 13. We get up to 91. We are close. 14. 105. This is it. This way we get all the way to the top. So the strategy is we use the first egg to go to floor number 14, then 14 plus 13, so 27, and so on, until we reach the top. As soon as the first egg breaks, we then use the second to investigate the range between the last two throws. How many throws do we need in the worst case scenario? Well, this chart shows, as a function of where the safe floor is located, the number of throws needed. We have 14 repeated a few times, much better than the 19 we had going up 10 by 10. Did you solve it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want a more complicated version of this riddle, what if you had three eggs and a building with 1000 floors? We'll leave it here for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you press a like button and subscribe to the channel to get notified when our next riddle is out. I will see you in the next video. I am Yuri and this is RiddleBear, the channel that will help you develop riddle solving skills and be able to solve riddles you didn't think you were capable of.